Hi friends, I actually had a very serious topic to talk to you about today, and that is the, the spiritual roots of anti-Semitism. And as if a God planned a scenery around us, just as we were worshiping and getting ready here, there were five arson fires set around us. We haven't had the police report yet, but there seemed to be by, by Muslim extremists. We didn't even know if we were going to be evacuated but uh, we're hearing the planes going overhead. But uh, we, we want to share this topic, and I want to look at it uh, not on a racial basis or a political basis, but on what is the spiritual background behind it. So the title of this message is Why, is, Why Anti-Semitism? But actually talking about the demonic roots of anti-Semitism, and which is coming today into anti-Zionism, spirits of anti-Christ, and actually... It has to do with the spiritual battle that we are in today as we come close to the coming of the Messiah. And um, it's just amazing. You know, we see around us today uh, a rise of a very vicious kind of anti-Semitism. I don't even know if I would call it anti-Semitism because it's really focused more on anti-Zionism uh, today. It's a weird mixture. It seems to be being... a fan the flames by a radical leftist on the one side and radical Islamists on the other side and it's getting some backing from the United Nations and spread all around the world on social media and the news so it's it's really crazy I mean I think it's at, at a level today that uh, if you were to look at the propaganda in the late 30s right before the Holocaust it would look like child's play as to what's going on here the calling for a total elimination of our nation. But let, let's look at the spiritual roots of this. And I want to say this is not a, uh, a small issue. As you look at it, I'm going to pick one verse here for to look at, but it's really an issue that goes across the Bible from beginning to end. So again, let's pull out of a racial, psychological, political viewpoint, and let's try to ask some spiritual questions about this. Well, let's read, uh, I could have picked many verses, but let's look at a verse in uh, Matthew chapter 2, which actually speaks of the birth of Yeshua. And I want to mention right off, may not seem right, but there is a connection between Yeshua and anti-Semitism or anti-Zionism. Might be the exact opposite of what you think, though. So let's look at this. Matthew chapter 2, uh, verse 16, 17, and 18. Verse 16 says, in Hebrew, Kasher ra'a hordus ki hetelvo ha'chachamim ra'gazad ma'od v'shalach la'arog et kol ha'yiladim shebevet lechem uvochol svivotea mibnei shnatayim v'amata lefi ha'et asher kava mipi ha'chachamim. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth to put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all of its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Let's go on the next verse, um, verse 17. As kol barama nishma, nehi bechi tamrurim rachel mivaka al banea neana lehinachem ki enam. And then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, a voice was heard in Ramah, Lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Well, first of all, I want to say that the quote here from Jeremiah is taken from Jeremiah chapter 31, which is the same chapter which is prophesying the coming of the new covenant. And then when Yeshua is born, this is a fulfillment of that when all the Jewish babies around were killed. Uh, now, let's just uh, step back for a moment. There are different levels of what we would call anti-Semitism, and I want to make sure we're not getting confused with them. I've, identif I've identified here five different levels. Let's just go through them quickly, and then we'll get onto the spiritual battle. The first one is just racism. All racism is bad. The second one has to do with God's covenant with ancient Israel. The third level had to do with trying to kill the coming of Messiah Yeshua, which is the one we just read. And then there is Christian jealousy, 
of the Jewish people over the past 2,000 years. And it ends up now with what we're seeing, which is actually an effort to stop the coming of the Messiah. Wow, that's a lot to look at. Let's walk through that together. First of all, let's say that all racism is, racism is bad. And there is racism in all people. We have to watch out for it. It's not just between Jews and Arabs, Jews and Gentiles. It's true of Chinese and Koreans and Japanese. It's true of blacks and whites. It's true of different types of Muslims from different backgrounds. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing. And we condemn racism on all levels, obviously, because God is one God and he loves all people just the same. And we who have come to know God's love and have been born again in the spirit through Yeshua's death and resurrection, we have love in our hearts for everyone. You can't possibly hate anyone because we've all received grace from God the same way no one is righteous. So we're against all forms of racism. Uh, in fact, recently, we've seen a lot of violent language within the Jewish people here in Israel, between Arabs and Jews, but also between left wing and right wing, between different political groups, between the religious and the secular. Whoa. It's gotten so bad that even the head of the Israeli secret police put out a public statement, which he never does, and said, we, we have to calm this down because our society is getting to a level of, of, of violent spirits. It's just, it's going to explode here in every different way. So we condemn racism and violence and hatred on every side. There's a sense, though, in some ways, in a strange way, that there was a particular hatred of Jewish people throughout history. Uh, I don't know why that is. Perhaps, uh, uh, in many ways, our people have been blessed. And there's been kind of a historic jealousy of our people. And then on the other hand, our people have sinned. And we really, for most of the past 2,000 years, we've been in a state of exile, really punishment by God. It, so it's a, it's a very complicated uh, story. The idea of anti-Semitism is one that plagues particularly uh, ultra-Orthodox Jews. They can't get away with it. In other words, the idea of the Holocaust is central to the faith. It's almost as if uh, religious Judaism has built itself in a response to anti-Semitism. It's almost as like if there wasn't anti-Semitism, I'm not sure what we would have uh, a, a, as a religion. But actually... The Bible shows us that part of the things that have gone wrong to our people are divine punishment, not from anti-Semitism. But on the other hand, it says that there is a lot which is hatred from Gentile nations against the people of Israel, which God wants to punish them for it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is that? And what in the world is going on? Well, I want us to look, go deeper now and look at the spiritual roots of this subject. Because if you were to examine anti-Semitism, both in Jewish people getting killed in the biblical period and the New Covenant period and in medieval history and in recent history, it doesn't make any sense. It's not, it's too bad. You can't explain it just by natural racism, historical racism. It's way above it. You cannot explain it if you don't believe that there is something in this world which is intelligent purposeful evil. There are evil angels, and there is a lead evil angel called Satan, and he's out to destroy the plan of God. And I want to look at those at the evil aspects of it. I want to remind you, this takes place over the whole Bible. If you look at the Bible at the beginning, it's a perfect world. Garden of Eden, when you look at the Bible at the end, at the end of the book of Revelation, it's a perfect world, paradise restored once again. But what happens is in the third chapter of Genesis, the third chapter of the Bible, Adam and Eve sin because they have been deceived by this evil angel, the enemy called Satan, who was before he fell, was called Lucifer. Now, when that happened, God exiled Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. But then he said to this evil angel, the day will come when I will bring a savior from the seed of the woman whom you have deceived and he will crush you and destroy you. In many ways, that is the first prophecy of the coming of the Messiah. 
And I want to say this is what real spiritual battle is all about. It's not against about Jews and Arabs and Judaism and Christianity. That's not what it's about. It's about these, this evil angel and these other evil angels trying to stop the coming of this great Messiah Savior who will destroy them and bring about that perfect Garden of Eden restored again. From the moment that prophecy happened, these evil angels were trying to destroy, to stop this promise. And so every time something would happen that would good, they would be tried to kill the people involved. God found a righteous man in Abraham and he made a covenant with him. And he said, through your seed, I will bring this Messiah who will both save the world and destroy Satan. And from that moment forward, there was a concentration of the force of evil to try to destroy Adam and his family as it went down. It went down to his great-grandson who was Judah. And God said it would be through your family that the Messiah would come. So then the evil forces were concentrated on that. You go down through history and then God promised to David it will be through your son. The evil forces try to focus even more. Throughout history, the forces of, of, of evil were against the Jewish people, not because of the Jewish people. Really, these evil angels don't like Jews. They don't like Gentiles. They don't like anybody. They're trying to stop Yeshua. They're trying to stop Jesus from coming. When the people got so many, they couldn't, the, the evil angels couldn't find out where, where, who, where is the Messiah coming. So at the time of ancient e uh, Egypt, at the time of Pharaoh, Pharaoh tried to kill all the Jewish people again. So it, it, that's not human. That's not human evil. That's demonically inspired evil. You come up later at the time in, in Persia, ancient Persia, when again, the Jewish people and the Persians who loved one another were prospering. There was a, a demonic plan from somebody named Haman to kill all the Jewish people. This is, God, not, this, is, this is not human racism. This is beyond this. This is a demonic, seated effort to stop the coming of the Messiah. As the time goes all the way up, I'm obviously oversimplifying, but I'm trying to explain a whole sweep of history to understand this. Let's come all the way up now. As you look at the birth of Yeshua, which we just read, Satan is knowing that the Messiah is supposed to be born. All the prophecies saying this is the time. Satan doesn't know who it is. He's not all powerful. He's just a fallen angel. And he hears the prophecies, just like Herod did. The king is being born. The Messiah is coming. And he says, where is he? Herod's trying to know who he is on a human level. But Satan wants to know on a demonic level. We want to kill him. So they can't get to him. He gets born. He slips away. And, but Herod doesn't know this. Satan doesn't know it. And he, he runs in to try to kill all the people in Bethlehem. All the Jewish babies. All the Jewish male babies. Why? Because the Messiah was supposed to be a male Jew that would be born in that city. That's why they didn't kill the little girl babies. And, that, and that's what they were trying to get to Jesus. They were trying to get Yeshua to stop him to being birthed. And all the Jewish people around them suffered because, not because of Jewish people, but because of Satan trying to stop Yeshua from coming and destroying Satan's kingdom, bringing salvation to the world and bringing perfect paradise. Now he missed him. But when Matthew describes this event, he compares that to the prophecy in Jeremiah. And he says, this is a prophetic pattern that's going on throughout history. There is a demonic attack upon the people of Israel to stop the coming of the Messiah. And that's why all this killing is going on. Jewish people, to tell you the truth, we have, at least those who don't know Yeshua and don't understand the spiritual warfare, they have no idea. Why is this happening? Why does everybody hate us? Why does everybody try to kill us? We don't know. We don't understand this. We live in the midst of 22 Arab nations, 49 Muslim nations. Why are they, why are they trying to kill us? It doesn't make any sense. But it has to do with a spiritual battle. Now, Yeshua was born. Satan didn't know where he was. Herod didn't know where he was. 30 years went by. Nobody knew where he was because he was hidden. He was living in Nazareth. But then he came forth when he was 30. He, he came out and John the Baptist said, this is him. This is the one. 
the Holy Spirit came, this is the one, and suddenly Satan knew who it was. At this point, no one else matters. It's just this one man. Stop him. There's no anti-Semitism here. It's just the devil against, the Antichrist against the Christ. The devil tries to stop him. He takes him out, he tempts him, but Yeshua passed the test. and Satan couldn't make him fall. And so he goes out and preaches and there's nothing he can do. And Yeshua brings disciples and they begin to win. Yeshua is crucified to give us, to give mankind forgiveness of sins. He's raised from the dead to give us eternal life. He rises into heaven and pours out the Holy Spirit. And it, it, the kingdom of God is going on and there's nothing the devil can do. Hallelujah. Uh-oh. But... We, Yeshua said something here, which I jokingly say was a pretty stupid strategic mistake. It wasn't, of course. It was God's grace. But Yeshua, before he died, turned to the Jewish people in Jerusalem and he said, You will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I think Satan was surprised. Wait a minute. Yeshua left. He's in heaven. He's left it here. There's nothing here but these disciples. And they're messing up all over the place. And Yeshua said he's not going to come back until the Jewish people in Jerusalem welcome him back. Wait a minute. What is the devil thinking? I just have to stop this one thing. I have to kill the Jewish people. I have to stop Christians from preaching the gospel and certainly stop them from bringing to the gospel to the Jewish people. This is the root of spiritual warfare in the world today. And he's been trying to kill that. So this goes on throughout history. There was a recently a, um, a, an, an Israeli um, writer who wrote that he said they came to understand that the reason why there was persecution against Jews among Christians was not because we killed Jesus. Because that didn't make sense. I mean, we sure we killed Jesus. He, Jesus was Jewish. Everybody in the story in the New Testament is Jewish. The good guys, the bad guys, the Messiah, everyone. Is that, that doesn't make sense. What it was, was the fact that he was born among us. That he himself, is, that Jesus is Jewish. That's what caused jealousy on the other side by Christians. Now, it should be just the opposite. For instance, did you know that the Inquisition was not against Jews? The Inquisition was against Jews who had been converted to Catholicism and were under the realm of the church and wanted to stay being Jews. In other words, it's not Jews, it's not Christians, it's not even Jews that convert to Christianity, but Jews who believe in Yeshua and want to maintain their identity as Jewish people are the beginning of fulfilling that prophecy of inviting Yeshua to come back and that has to be stopped. Now, as long as the Jewish people were in exile, there were no problem. But what happened was the Jewish people started to come back. Why? Because born-again, spirit-filled Christians have been praying for our people all around the world, praying for our salvation, praying for our restoration. And that brought about the fulfillment of prophecies of Jewish people coming back to the land. Hallelujah. Jewish people were happy. Christians were happy because it's prophesied between 30 and 40 times in the Bible that after the great exile, God would bring the Jews back to this land. Hallelujah. Well, except for one thing. Satan says, wait a minute. If the Jews are coming back to Israel, they're getting physically in position where they might be able to invite Yeshua to come back. I've got to kill them all again. Same plan. No difference between Pharaoh, between Haman, between Herod, between... The, it's, it's all the same thing. But then in that generation, it was who? Hitler, of course. And the same plan, just kill all the Jews. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Jews and Germans love one another. <laughs> Why did that happen? It's a demonic attack to stop Jewish people from coming back and fulfilling Yeshua's prophecy to invite him back. Now, what's happening today from Satan's viewpoint is even worse. There are spirit-filled Christians around the world that love our people, are praying for us, 
And we are, and Jewish people are not only back in the land of Israel, they're coming to faith in Yeshua, and we are here, and you are joining with us, and we are crying out to fulfill the prophecy of Yeshua. Every day, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai. The devil says, his time is up, it's over. And he's panicking, he's going crazy. That's why these crazy things are going on, like these fires going around us, like the Islamic Jihad, like the, the, the UN and the radical left, which have a lot of Jews in it. Why are they fighting against it? And, and then everything, all this is demonically inspired. It doesn't, it's much more than, it's not human racism. That's not what's going on. There is a spiritual battle here to stop the, the second coming of Yeshua. At the time of Herod, which we just read, was the attempt of the forces of evil to stop the first coming of Yeshua. That's over. But now we're getting ready for the second coming. Most Jewish people don't understand this. But you have to realize the same forces that want to stop Yeshua coming will, st will fight against Jewish people in general. And, of course, Jewish people that want to pray to receive Yeshua to come back, but also against all Christians who are praying with us and supporting us. I believe the time will come when the evil forces in the world will say, it's okay for Christians to believe in Jesus as long as you don't support Israel and particularly don't support the Messianic Jews within the nation of Israel. The same forces that hate Yeshua, hate the Jewish people, and they also hate Christians, true believing Christians around the world. The same for spirit of Antichrist will come against Israel and will come against Bible-believing Christians. And that's what we're seeing happening today. As we look toward the, uh, the prophecies about the end times, I see natural disasters, attacks, persecutions, attacks against Israel, a persecution against Christians in every nation. But in the midst of that, the people of God are celebrating and preaching the gospel and worshiping God and because, actually, the victory is at hand. And we have this victory. We're not worried. God's protection is upon us. What we're here to do at this time is in the midst of these attacks, realize that the enemy's time is over. This is the time for the kingdom of God to be revealed, the gospel message to be finished, to be preached around the world, the nation of Israel restored, the messianic remnant within Israel restored, Jews, Arabs, internationals believe in Yeshua, welcoming him, him to come back, and Yeshua will return. A perfect kingdom will be set up on the earth, and Satan's forces will be destroyed. Hallelujah. We win. Uh, well, between this moment and that moment, though, there's going to be some tough battles. And Yeshua said, look, I don't pray to take you out of the tribulations of this world. I pray for that you to be protected in the midst of tribulation, People don't believe the lies. They're thinking you're not going to be here. Of course you're going to be here. Yeshua said, in the world you have tribulation, and I pray for you to be encouraged in the midst of it, and that I will protect you also during that time. This is the time of spiritual battle, spiritual warfare, the end times prophecies being fulfilled. Yes, the next to last prophecy is all the nations inspired by evil coming to attack Israel. And at the same time, attacking Bible-believing Christians around the world. But that's the next and last step. The last step is Yeshua returns and a wonderful kingdom of peace is set up from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world. So let's remember, in the midst of the fires, the attacks, whatever's going on, we keep preaching love and truth and peace and joy in the kingdom of the Messiah, who is both the King of Israel, the head of the church, and the Savior of all mankind. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you in Yeshua's name that although we are in the midst of a huge spiritual battle, Lord, that we understand that this is to stop. These are forces of evil trying to stop the forces of righteousness. And we will keep believing, keep praying, keep loving, keep sharing the truth until the Messiah's kingdom is manifested on this earth. Amen and amen. Be encouraged, friends.